Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE Conversations here at the Palo Alto Studios for theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE, co-founder of SiliconANGLE. We're here for Thought Leader Thursday and my guest here to talk about the cloud earnings in the industry and also all the mega trends happening is Tarun Thacker, who's the co-founder and, and CEO of Dados.io, hot startup Los, out of Los Gatos, California. Um, welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you, John, thank you. thank you to be back. We love having entrepreneurs come in because you guys are on the cutting edge, you're sweating bullets, you're stressing out, you're building a company, you guys are still in a growth mode, which is great, congratulations. Thank but you're you. also playing in the cloud game. You're in the ecosystem, we're seeing massive visibility now into the numbers. You Correct. saw the cloud earnings just came out. Correct. Amazon continues to crush it. Um, Microsoft, and they're bundling 365 in there, juicing <laughs> the numbers up, but we all know what's going on there. Correct. But still, they're looking good. Correct. And then Google's the dark horse with really that developer platform looking good too. So Correct. the big three are, are popping. But you know, Facebook just announced a $10 billion quarter. Right. They're a cloud too, <laughs> not to be reckoned with, but kind of not in the pure infrastructure as a service. So clearly, the market is, is, is showing that it, there's some stability. We're in the second, third inning, maybe of the of this cloud game. What's what's your take on on the marketplace? No, I think this is this is an excellent topic. Thank you, John, for for again having us back. Uh, always great to be here. You know, so so I, you know the way I think about what's happening really in the cloud is sort of on three dimensions. Number one, you know, you rightly said twenty billion dollars is what Amazon is on a run rate business of. We personally believe it's still the first innings. It's not the second or the third. You know, it's it's. They've seen a massive adoption, as it's called the product market fit and the repeatability, uh, with the developers, with the application developers, with the SMBs of the world. Yeah. But the enterprises are just starting to scratch the surface of the cloud. We believe the cloud is in the first innings. The real enterprise growth. Enterprise cloud. Enterprise cloud is just Early. big neck, just big neck, right? I was, you know, I'll, I'll give you a quick little example. I was out in Denver visiting a customer which is the world's largest, one of the world's largest shipping companies they are moving as fast as possible to the cloud, but this is their first foray. But their first foray is not five terabytes or 50 terabytes, their first foray is 50 petabytes of data. So they're moving right. big time. Oh, they're moving this big time. This is not time. a toe in the water. No, this they is, take two years to validate and then they go big. Right. right, so talk about the, so the, the trends here because let's tease through the numbers. I looked at the, all their earnings, and again, Microsoft is doing well, but remember, they're bundling Office 365, which kind of puts Google on notice because Google's got a huge presence that they could roll in. So there's a lot of number games going on that the analysts are kind of pointing out and we're pointing out, but Amazon has just been crushing it right. on, on overall performance. <laughs> right. I mean, look at the compute that's going on, the scale. Storage. They got thousands of enterprise customers. And, and still there's a lot more growth there because oh. the on-prem true private cloud is still growing. It's correct, it's correct. So and what is the state of the enterprise right now? And who is using the public cloud more and who's using it less and why are they doing that? Is it a makeup? Is it a DNA culture? Is it just evolution? No, it's just evolution, uh, John. I think, I think the enterprises are finally getting latching onto this. I think they are, but they're latching on it in a big way. Right, and so that's the second point that I that I sort of uh, wanted to highlight. That while you know you call Google Cloud as a Trojan horse and Amazon being the lead, and then Microsoft somewhere in the middle, let's not forget about Oracle Cloud. Larry Ellison is a formidable competitive spirit. He is not going to give up. He has not given up so far. They are going to build an Oracle Cloud. There will be. Well, a they have an Oracle Cloud. They have an Oracle Cloud. <laughs> but you know, having Oracle Cloud versus having really truly an Oracle. It's so Cloud funny. Yeah, Larry but, Ellison but, called <laughs> Salesforce a fake cloud, but a lot of people are calling Oracle <laughs> okay, a fake cloud. fake cloud. But Oracle on Oracle, we've we've interviewed Dave Donatelli. Larry is the only one who has to come on the cube. Oracle Cloud works great with Oracle. Correct. They're trying to put the message out there that Oracle is working well with cloud native. They're in the cloud native um, foundation now, CNCF. Sure, so sure. you're seeing Oracle, sure. uh, Mitz Avery and folks over there doing a great job. So, but they're not getting the word out. Oracle's the, not getting the job done because no one sees Oracle as a cool cloud native company. No, they, and they're not. And I think that's a very valid point, but what I'm trying, but what I'm saying is that there will be room, there is oxygen in this market to get the fourth and the fifth cloud provider. There will be specialized clouds mm -hmm. and there will be places for that. Mm -hmm. you, because Amazon is not an answer for all. It is definitely an answer for majority of your workloads, but the HPC, the high performance computing workloads, mm -hmm. the GPU workloads, the Oracle, you know, you look at the number one database in the cloud that Amazon claims openly is MySQL. Yeah. It's not Oracle. An Amazon database business, if they're making 20 billion in total AWS, I will tell you about 40% to 50% of their business is database. Yeah. And that's not Oracle. So think of five to $10 billion of revenue and money that Amazon is making is not Oracle. But the, you what know, does that so mean? Does that mean Oracle's losing money or that's leakage on Oracle's model? Is that Oracle still has an opportunity? Because they still control a lot of databases. Thank you, and thus, you know, uh, th thank you. Thank you for asking that. 
it's not that Oracle is losing, not lose, is losing money. It's the next generation applications. It's the cloud native so it's applications. Growth. So it's pure It's growth. the new oxygen. Okay. It's the new wealth creation. So there's a, it's like the classic example when the internet started, web traffic. Web traffic is increasing because more people are using correct, the internet. Correct, correct. So the, what you're saying is that cloud is creating more database market, mm -hmm. and Amazon's getting a big chunk of it there. More application but market. But Oracle still has the database market. For example, if and you look SAP at, too. And look at the third you know, reason of these clouds. If you look at AIML, right? These applications, the Alexa, the Siri-like mm -hmm. applications, yeah. and the applications that will be built on top of this will be built in the cloud. You're not going to build, keep build, start building Alexa AI application on-prem infrastructure. That is not happening. And that's the third part of you know, this whole cloud. We, we say it's $20 billion, yeah. and we have barely scratched the surface on AI, ML, and blockchain. And all those applications that will be built will be built on cloud elastic infrastructure. All right, so what's your take? I mean, uh, right now Amazon's winning the, the cloud game. Oracle, I wouldn't call them number four, but they're trying to juice the revenues <laughs> up as well. But they clearly have an installed base and they're not going anywhere. Captive audience. SAP is going multi-cloud, so you're seeing SAP starting to put their, looking, looking and saying, hey, we want our customers to run SAP workloads on any cloud, so they're clearly Correct. taking multi-cloud. Correct. Who else is out there? Alibaba Cloud's now coming to the US and San Mateo. So they're number seven cloud, but four worldwide. Correct. Right, so it means, Pure worldwide numbers, Alibaba's four. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with you, Ali Cloud. You know, we talked about Alibaba, yeah. their cloud is called Ali Cloud, and, and fortunately, you know, as, as you're building a company, as you talked about early on in, in our offline conversation, you get to meet all the way from government DODs and DIAs of the world to, we met with Ali Cloud executive team just a few weeks ago, and they were out here in the Bay Area. Didi is the de facto car hailing company, it's not Uber in China. Mm -hmm. We believe Ali Cloud will be that in China there will be a fifth cloud, there will be a sixth cloud. To my point, yeah. there will be specialized clouds. Amazon is not going to win this entire pie. Yeah. And there will be clouds outside of US market. Well, I had a chance to sit down with Karen Liu and Dr. Min Wan Lee, as well as Dr. Wong at Alibaba in China a few weeks ago. And if you look at what they're doing in China, it's not just cloud. They got e-commerce, they got the City Brain project. They're looking at holistically around data. Absolutely. Data's fundamental to their vision. I think that's consistent with what we're seeing in the US. A little bit more broader scope, because IT here is a little bit more, has more legacy. Right. I mean, China. China's got much more focus and got some government controls and they get some latitude to do the right things. But the consumers are moving faster in China. If you look at the mobile growth. Absolutely. Huge I mean, it's, you know, indicator. Look, look at the Didi's growth. The Didi's growth yeah. is you know, more faster than Uber's growth. Right? And they've built a massive, yeah. massive company out there. So, um, IoT's pretty hot in China, you're starting to see that. I mean, this is a reimagining of cloud. So you guys are in the middle of it with backup and recovery. So as a CEO, you're like, you're in the, you're, your body's swerving cars <laughs> that are flying by you. You're trying not to get run over. Right. Um, you got a good market opportunity with the cloud because GDPR's coming right around the corner. This, in yes, Europe, yeah, I mean. absolutely. And so, ransomware. So, so what's your strategy? Are you, are you, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, you're not dodging cars, but I mean, as a startup, you got to worry about you know, your success oh, no. might kill you, but how do you manage the, the business? I mean, how are you looking at this? Because you've got a great opportunity. No, thank you. Growth thank you, market. John. Thank you, thank you. No, we, we, are, we are very lucky and fortunate that some of the decisions we made back four years ago, people used to laugh while you're going in this market of cloud native <laughs> applications, and <laughs> isn't eight out of $10 being spent on Oracle? Why would you go after that? And we're like, guys, that's today. Where the yeah. puck is going? Yeah. The puck is going towards the cloud and cloud native applications. And, and uh, you know, to answer your question, we have found a beautiful, beautiful, excellent product market fit. Uh, you know a little bit about the company What's we the just use closed. Case you know we're we're just classically going back up and recovery use cases built for cloud native applications. So, for example, I talked about the number one database in the cloud is MySQL. Mm -hmm. The number two database on prem is SQL Server. Take a guess on number two database in the cloud. It's MongoDB. They just went IPO two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Number two database on Amazon is MongoDB. Who yeah. thought that five years ago? Well, Lamstack is just open source, is driving a lot of its action. So I'll give you an example. Our One of our biggest, biggest customers, which we're going to be announcing very soon, but take the liberty to share here, OpenTable. OpenTable, we are protecting OpenTable. 2.5 billion documents. That's your and my yeah. reservation. Yeah. Yeah. That's your and my reservation that we make for a beautiful restaurant. Yeah, and if I, if I and know, change my reservation, I got to have that backed up. I want to bring it back. And you know, no, you guys are doing that. So what? It, so so those are the scale. What's the scale of the OpenTable ballpark? In? So all their entire that you reservation do. application, the whole thing. I will not. Be, I probably will not be able to talk about <laughs> the data sets. But <laughs> <laughs> have to go edit you know, out. but but you know, their 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 entire geo distributed application. You could be in New York or you could be in London. And in which cloud are they using? They're 
all Google Cloud. Okay. They're on-prem, so they're truly hybrid private cloud and public cloud. Okay. So I call that a multi-cloud data mm -hmm. management space. They have a ton of stuff still on-prem. They're not going to divorce away from that very quickly. What's the Google situation? Um, Ram, uh, Sam Ramjay's over there doing a great job. Um, Google Next is coming up soon next year. Um, great traction, I, but still, people aren't considering Google as the white glove service because, well, Amazon's not really known for that either, but at least they have a lot more, thousands of more customers than Google does. Yeah, so I think the problem is two, twofold, uh, in my humble opinion, or, or the observation is twofold. One, uh, I think Google needs to amp up their game around cloud and cloud messaging. You open Amazon AWS dot cloud website and you open GCB website, you could just see the differences. How Amazon yeah. talks about cloud, you're still selling compute storage network, but they talk business agility. Yeah. What took a month for SQL Server now takes two hours. Yeah. That's what you're selling, yeah. right? You're selling and so I think speed, Google, and you're selling automation, and you're selling, you're selling value. orchestration, yeah. right? So I think Google has to amp up their game and amp up their game around Are they that. too technical, too geeky? Too nerdy, like? too geeky, and still talking about infrastructure. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah. I think Sam knows that. And, and I think second part, which is you know they absolutely need to amp up their game, not go head on and follow Amazon, find the newer applications and newer use cases where they can go ahead of Amazon. Yeah. Right? Whenever you're playing out of war, yeah. either you can follow somebody or you go establish if a new base. They go frontal attack on these guys, they'll lose it. Gotta, they'll gotta, lose it. Gotta play the shadows. I think they can slingshot around. I think the developer traction they have is strong, even though Amazon's got strong developer traction. Google's got some goodness with TensorFlow. They got some great technology. I mean, Google, But they gotta stop the game of where Google go with us. No. Enterprises don't work that way, even though I get why they say that, because it's true at some level from an um, alpha geek perspective. But this isn't the you know land of alpha geeks. These are real people that have jobs in enterprise IT that want to transform. They're real enter enterprises who have real DBAs and yeah. real server admins yeah. who really care about data services. Yeah. Going back to the comment, not just a shiny driven. new toy. No. I need reliability. Proof. I want durability of this data. You know, don't just yeah. tell me I can get compute ten times cheaper than Amazon. Yeah. That's not what I care about. Change my talk my language, I care about data services, I call data driven enterprise. Okay, as you guys go out and talk to customers, give me the anecdotal um, view of the landscape of customers, because obviously the earnings came out, we saw, uh, again, Amazon continuing to do well, but they got some competition, we just laid in and unpacked that. Customers now see this, what's kind of the, the conversations in, in the boardrooms and then in the, in the trenches on IT and enterprise as they transform because this now, <sighs> IT's not a department anymore in the future enterprise. It's, now, a, it's now a fabric of all things in cloud native. What's the, what are the conversations? Are they slowing down? Obviously they want to go faster. Is it a personnel issue? What are some of the conversations? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a real example. So we presented recently to a federal, big massive federal government agency. We cannot take their name out of their Mm -hmm. Out of the legal ease, yeah. <laughs> out, of a lot of DC, out yeah. of Washington DC, out here yeah. in the Bay Area, CIA. Looking at <laughs> <Go> <laughs> or NSA, uh, you or know, looking at the startups in the Bay Area, and there was like, look, you know, while we have adopted the IBMs, the mainframes, and the EMCs and the Dells of the world, we also know the the wealth of the innovation is here in Silicon Valley, yeah. right? So they come out once a year, and and I can tell you, John, spending two hours that we did with them earlier in the week, and they are accelerating their journey to the cloud things that they were in foreign terms like microservices, mm -hmm. that's how they want to build these federal agencies now. Yeah, yeah. Every application has to be a microservice. They are not today there. I'll tell you that. They are not there, but that is top of mind and for the Gov CI. And GovCloud is moving Gov very Cloud. fast. FedRAMP, all these services. You know, Amazon calls it commercial cloud service, C2S, yeah. built for the government. And, and that entire team was here and they just want to accelerate Well, Tarun, great job. Congratulations on your opportunity. We just talked about Datos IO. You guys, it's D-A-T-O-S dot I-O if you want to check out the website. Uh, you're going to be at reInvent. You're going to come on theCUBE. We'll be there with two sets. Uh, again, like our fifth year doing uh, Amazon. Love the community there, do a great job. Andy Jassy comes on, great group, Therese Carlson among others. Um, what are you expecting to see this year at Amazon? I'll see besides the fact it's going to be crowded. Um, it's certainly the show of the year in terms of cloud. Momentum, you know, they're going to accelerate the momentum. The amount of services they're planning to announce from, because we work with the team very closely and the amount of acceleration they're showing with new partners coming on board mm -hmm. and the partners like us who had one customer and now we have 20 in Amazon Cloud. Yeah. You know, we just became an advanced technology partners. They understand that. We became so an- So you, you're happy with how they're working oh, with Oh, we partners. love Amazon team. Yeah. We became an advanced technology partner. They drilled us down for three months to prove themselves, mm -hmm. yes, Datos can run on their infrastructure. Yeah. You know, they want to go fast, but they want to go diligent fast. Yeah, we love Amazon too, of course. Our CrowdChat solvers on their website as a case study using some of their uh, great stuff. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank Q. you. Final Thank thoughts, you, earnings, cloud, where are we? 
this is this 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 is unstoppable force. It's an unstoppable force. We're in the first innings. There's so much opportunity opportunity ahead of us, yeah. and and we couldn't have picked a beautiful market than what we did. And years true ago. private cloud, as Wiki Bond pointed out, turns out that's playing out. On-prem activities high. Your thoughts on on on-prem true private cloud? It's going to survive. It's going to survive, <laughs> but it's not going to be the growth place. <laughs> <laughs> but Wikibon there, thinks it will grow with the SaaS. With the SaaS, I agree, but yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. Infrastructure is yeah. not going to be growing. So, <laughs> so that's, that's our two cents, <laughs> but we know, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We have a phenomenal, exciting product launch coming up. Yeah. Love to look I to just tweeted on Twitter this morning, $1.5 billion are going to be coming out of uh, on-premise, non-differentiated labor operations, which basically means the rack and stacking, some of these, these uh, jobs are going to go away. But the growth is in automation, AI, and machine learning, machine learning. and some SaaS tooling. Cloud applications. So cloud operations business models growing on premise. And, th and those dollars are going to leak to the cloud. Yeah, and cloud, it's all to the cloud. Tarun, thanks so much. Thank you. Co-founder and CEO of Datos.io. I'm John Furrier, here for CUBE Conversations in Palo Alto at our studios. Thanks for watching.